I don't know. We'll get. Oh, okay, one. okay, okay. We're gonna do the Q and A. Okay. For questions answered. Okay. As we call it. Okay. This where the dog comes in. Yes, it okay. is. <laughs> Soon to be two dogs. Yes. You better start thinking of questions, hey, otherwise Sammy. it's going to be awfully quiet I'm ready in here. For Sammy, whenever. Huh. I have a few that, if you didn't think of them, I can throw them out there. Okay, this is um, a big chance. You know what we could use before you sit down and do this? A uh, shot of bourbon. <laughs> we could use a, a general cleanup of the stuff, you know, the cups and stuff, and, and we didn't put out any napkins. Oh, we'll get it at lunch. Okay, no problem. We'll do it at lunch. Okay. Um, so, this is your chance to ask anything that you want. And uh, at lunchtime, uh, due to uh, prior c commitments and atmospheric conditions, uh, I have to go from here into my office, and then I'll be back uh, for the next part after lunch. And then afterwards, we'll take a tour, which will end uh, at, outside the building. So... This is the ideal time to ask any question you can think of. And the questions can be, let's just review what we did so far today. We made Cherry Garcia cream ice. We made a cinnamon toast crunch ice cream. We made side. chocolate chip brownie cream ice. And we made banana, 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 fudge. banana fudge cream ice. So you can ask questions about those, or you can ask questions about any flavor you can think of, or you can... Uh, Simply buy my book and we can quit now. <laughs> uh, or you can ask anything about the business, the equipment, anything you want. We're open for our opinions, which is all they are. But first, the important stuff, uh, most of you know, but those of you watching on uh, YouTube, this is Samantha Jane Thompson. She's uh, five years old, a golden retriever, and she uh, is in charge of all our advertising and marketing. She has her own uh, uh, site. Uh, that you can go to and pretty soon she's going to have uh, a sister uh, named Stella Jane Thompson. Uh, Stella right now is up in Boston, Massachusetts. She's also five years old and she'll be joining the Emory Thompson family uh, in about 10 days. So we're looking forward to it. So the next time you see this video, I'll have Sammy on my lap and Jeff will have Stella. <laughs> Stella! Stella! <laughs> I asked Paula, quick, quick thing, then we'll go on. I asked Paula, I said, if we can find uh, a mature dog for as a partner, for a uh, friend for Sammy, is it okay if we change the name? And uh, if you believe in God winks or that, that uh, God laughs at you when you're trying to make plans, Paula said, sure, I don't see why you couldn't change the name. So finally, the breeder where Sadie came from and Sammy came from called up and said, yes, I'll give you uh, my uh, golden retriever. And by the way, her name is Stella. And I said, I want, I had told Paula, any name but Stella. You know, I didn't want to be going around town. Everybody's going to go, Stella! Yeah, well, we're stuck with it now. <laughs> yes, you had a question back there. Have you ever put a uh, CB350 into a concession trailer? Oh, many, many times. Are they, I mean, no issues that you can think of? Not at all. It works very well. What you can do is uh, one of two ways. Because the concession trailer is crowded, I suggest buying it on the stand, like you see there. We sell the stand extra, and then um, it's it's on casters. But you can make some very simple uh, hold down brackets uh, to hold it in place while you're driving around. And then when you want to make ice cream, you just remove the brackets and roll it out into the center of the truck. The interesting thing about having it on the machine, though, is you're going to get a frozen dessert manufacturer's license. Somebody's going to require that, your county, your state, uh, the place of manufacture. So let's say you live, everything in Florida is a gated community. Uh, I used to live in a gated community upstate New York, but it was not the same kind. <laughs> I was doing three to five. Um, but uh, everything here is gated communities, and they're not going to let you run a business out of your house most right, times. Right. However, oh. the truck becomes your place of business. So... The ice cream, the ices are technically made in the truck. That's who has the license. The truck has the license. You can go park it in front of uh, the supermarket. You can park it in your own driveway. But the, uh, the place of business is the truck. 
Uh, that's where you're making the, the, the frozen desserts. So what you do is you pull it into your driveway that doesn't allow businesses, and in your garage you've got two or three chest freezers, you've got shelves with your flavorings on it like you see here in our ice cream room, uh, you've got the dairy blend in a refrigerator, you've got all the stuff that you wouldn't want on the truck because it would take up too much room in the garage. You could even have a long extension cord coming out, and so instead of running the machine on a generator, you run it on your house uh, 220 volt current. But the truck has got the license, so nobody can say boo to you. Yeah, well, typically the, they want you to have a commissary, you know, a commissary or something. No, like that's that. not true. Okay. Uh, that's just what they're saying. Oh, well, if you want to go into business and you don't have a store, you can go into a commissary. Yes. That's not true, though. Uh, a commissary is where five or six other people or ten sure. people use kitchen, it and they share kitchen a kitchen. Space. And you pay a fortune for the right. Yes, you do. You're going to set up your truck as your place of business. And, and you then, can use your truck, you can use your uh, garage or a storage place, I recommend a storage place, where you make the ice cream. You pull up there on a Saturday morning, you plug your machine in, you make all your ice cream so that you're not using the CB350 out on the street. Yeah, and you're certainly not going to make ice as an ice cream while you're trying to sell it. Right, naturally. You're going to have a line 200 people long and you're going to need you know, all hands on deck selling the ice cream. Jeff alluded to something that they, we have in Florida, so I've got to assume it's other places. You drive down the turnpike here and heading to Tampa and you see a, a building, a one floor building with about 35 garage doors. And I go, man, that's some warehouse. They're really moving some stuff. No, they aren't. Each one of those garage doors is a business. And the guy's got, his, or the woman's got her electric in there and the ice cream room set up with a proper floor concrete floor with two-stage epoxy rust-oleum passes uh, and when you're finished making your ices or ice cream for the day you pull down the handle and just like the Bronx we lock, put double locks on the, the pull down handle and you say goodnight there's your whole business you're not bothering anybody but you're you got a great place in a, a neighborhood that you're not gonna have people coming around to buy ice though they will they'll you find you you wouldn't believe the business self store places I mean, they got wood carvers, they got welders, anything you can think of. And that's where I first went to find my ice cream. I was going to wholesale it, so I was looking for a used store place. Fortunately, they were closed. Gym. Mm -hmm. And then you just stumbled on the gym. And then instead. I stumbled on the back room of a gym. <laughs> okay. Okay, any other questions? Yes, sir. How many hours can I run that machine per day, sir? 24 <laughs> More than you can. <laughs> yeah, 24 hours a day. It'll run longer than you can. Yeah, easily my machines can run 24 hours a day. Uh, here's what happens. We put a lot of people into the CB350 because it's uh, so affordable. Um, and that's the first one on the counter behind me. Okay. Um, and I am extremely careful with your money. Uh, it does me no good to be like everybody else where they sell you everything in the world that they can possibly think of and then walk away and you go bust because you don't have 5,000 cash in the bank to meet emergencies. Uh, I am gonna set you up with as little money spent as humanly possible, and then you're gonna grow into it. You're gonna run the machine long hours, and when you think you can't take any more hours, then you're gonna go hire uh, a trusted person to come in at midnight, you hand them your formulas, and you go to bed, and they keep running the machine all night. I personally prefer, because my family, my wife's family is, is uh, uh, background of police and military. I see police, firemen, and recently retired military all have an attitude towards jobs that you don't see uh, in, say, a union shop. Uh, most, most people going to work are putting in their eight hours and going home. That's it. Um, someone who has recently come out of the military looks at it as a mission. My mission tonight is to get my boss's 35 gallons of lemon ice made uh, and then I can go home. And you, you can't find better labor than that. Um, labor's expensive, so you want to get the most out of it th that you can, and that means running the machine, uh, you know, get the most out of your machine. At some point in time, in about a year or two years, maybe three years, you're going to call up and say, I'm making so much money, but I'm working 18 hours a day. I haven't seen my wife in a week. What do I do? I say, you send some of that money over here and you buy a 24 quart. <laughs> So now you cut yourself down to six hours. It a won't day. take them that long. It took me. I know uh, it won't. <laughs> took me about eight months with a six quart machine, 
eight months, and then I, and of course, by then you can just write a check for the for the new machine because uh, you've made the money. But what a difference! Because you're going to get one and a half quarts out of this, <coughs> one and a half gallons, gallons out of this, and that one you're going to get six gallons out of. So, you know, it's no brainer. I was making three three hundred gallons a week. So 300 gallons a week on this machine just wasn't doable. The machine's doable. Oh, sure. But, but the labor isn't doable. The time that you're putting into it. Also, when you go up to a bigger machine later, I'm not pushing you into a bigger machine now, but later when you go into a bigger machine, we're going to be at $15 nationwide uh, minimum wage per hour in no time. And it's going to go up from there. It's never going to go down. It's going to go up. So you've got to get as much production out of that hour as you possibly can. If an employee is working a six quart machine versus a 24 quart machine, there's your limitation. Um, well, suffice it to say, and, and uh, he's in this end of the business, I'm in our end of the business, suffice it to say, it's 100% you'll have that machine. There's no question. Right. The question is, do you want to buy it out right in the beginning? I don't, I don't profess leasing. I'm not a big guy to lease a machine. If you don't have the money, don't buy it. Yeah. But it's, that's the machine you're going to have. It's just, it's a no-brainer. His competitors know that. That's the machine. Here's another way to look at it. Um, the couple in the front row, it will be the two of them running this new business. They need almost right up front the 24-quart machine. If the person next to them, you, uh, has a restaurant and you employ 25 people, you need a CB356 quart. Why such a big one for them and a smaller one for you? Because you have 25 people running around who have free time to do other stuff. And ice cream making is fun. Everybody's going to want to do it. So one day, uh, the sous chef's making uh, the, um, the uh, ice, ice cream for you. Uh, the next day, uh, someone whose job is cleaning pots and pans can make ice cream for you too. With them, just the two of them starting out in this new business or any couple starting out in the business, they're going to be running, making the product. They're going to be selling the product. They're going to be cleaning the store. They're going to be running QuickBooks uh, for all the uh, part-time employees that they have. They're going to be doing so many different jobs that they can't afford 18 hours a day uh, to make uh, the ice cream. They need more time for the business itself. So that bolsters my idea of you hire someone capable to come in from midnight to 6 a.m. It can be a cousin. You hire someone that you trust to come in from 6 a.m. and say, I'm going to bed. You lock up when you leave uh, and, and know that your ice cream will be made just the way you did. The, the one thing I hear from people all the time, and I, I respect it, but I, I roll my eyes, and that is, well, I am the one who created this incredible ice cream. Nobody else can make it but me. Yes, they can. You hand them a five, five, three by five file card and teach them how to do it, it'll be as good as yours. Absolutely. You, you're going to have to give up. You can't grow a business without delegating authority. I used to come into work in the Bronx at, at 6 a.m. Uh, we had 40 locks we had to undo to open up a 40,000 square foot building. And I felt, as owner of the company, I had to be there first. Until I was tapped on the shoulder and said, you know, if you'd let somebody else unlock the doors, you could be home on a computer talking to Saudi Arabia or, uh, or Bangkok or other locations in the world that are in t different time zones. You're not using your time efficiently. So I changed. It, business is all about growth and uh, having to give up some of your authority to expand the business. That was a long answer to your question, yes. <laughs> Delivery and setup of the machine. What, what, uh, is there a setup actually involved <laughs> in it? So you purchase a machine. Plug it in. They come out and, uh, you know, is it set up or is it pretty much just a plug in? Plug it in. It's, it's relatively plug and play. Um, this one behind me, the CV350, is going to be a 220 line, mm -hmm. like, a, like a central air conditioning in your yeah. house. Okay. Well, they're all you 220 can, lines. Hmm? They're all 220 They are all 220 yeah. lines. The, the smaller, single phase. Okay. Uh, the smaller one goes to 110. But for the most part, yeah, you'll call an electrician. We're going to talk to your electrician. We've got four weeks to build your machine. We're going to talk to your electrician. We're going to tell him the size line we need, where we want it, what we want. And so he'll have it 
uh, all pre-set up so that you're just going to plug it in. Or if you know nothing like me, I came here, picked up my machine, well, the, brought it back to the store, no, 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 and no, I, no. it wouldn't fit the <laughs> okay. plug. So I called the electrician, and $75 later, it plugged in. And I was well, that was my next question. Is 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 there uh, no? There's no delivery standard. charge, or is you know can can you pick up the machine? I Not yet. Like, what, no, thank you. Pounds? Probably twenty uh, minutes. Can you can you sure? You know, have it loaded. I, in your I, I yeah, brought a trailer and picked up the twenty four cord. Okay. 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 So I'm, I'm, I'm only forty five minutes from here, so, so oh, then pick it up. I brought my trailer. His his guys in the back put it on. Okay. Put a strap on it, and off I went. Okay. And I was making ice cream the next morning. As far as learning how to make it. 411 videos so far is uh, over 200 hours. It would be great if somebody had a book that, that they could just refer to. I oh, mean like yours. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly, a formula. There's 200, 200, <laughs> over 200 hours of instruction. <laughs> if you can't learn it in 200 hours watching videos. Yes. Which is the best cooler to have for the 20, 24 quart? They do it only come in water or Good question. Uh, air versus water. Um, try to put it quite simply, it's a matter of cost. You're either going to pay a water bill or you're going to pay an air conditioning bill. And you're going to pay a big air conditioning bill. If this thing behind me, the 12 or the 24, was air cooled and I had this room at 75 degrees, within an hour it'll be up to 80. So you're going to pay for a lot of air conditioning to compensate for that. Uh, air conditioning is fossil fuel, it's electric, it's controlled by what happens in the world. Something goes wrong anywhere in the world and your electric bill goes up. Your electric bill goes up two or three times a year whether you like it or not. You have no say in it. A water bill, and it's going to sip water, we're using the top of the line American made Copeland condensing units, it's going to use water but only when you turn on that refrigeration switch. Eight minutes of using about a half a gallon of water, maybe three quarters uh, on a summer day. And then when you turn that switch off, off goes the water. Uh, the water is going to be far less. Water is expensive. Everybody complains about the bill. But it's really not that expensive. And where your electric bill for the air conditioning goes up three times a year, it's a big conglomerate. You have no say. Uh, your water bill is controlled by your city government. The city of Brooksville sets the price for water here. Do you want me and to get a platform so you can, no? I'm answering the question. Okay. If I, um, you got me off my train of thought. <laughs> I was um, trying. The water to. bill, if, if they raise the water bill a whole lot, uh, we're going to uh, vote them out of office. So water is always any equipment. Uh, those little guys over there are using, you know, one-eighth horsepower compressors. This is, this is uh, three horse. That thing's still generating heat, uh, a fair amount of heat. You don't want heat in your ice cream room. You're going to pay for it through electricity and air conditioning. So water cooled, unless you're on a septic system or you're in Saudi Arabia and there is no water. Or I know the, the, the CB350, we, we've been running that for days. I can I can tell like almost it almost seems like it's room temperature. I mean, I put my hand in the back, put my hand on the side because I've watched your videos that say this machine is generating a lot of heat, and I. Unless it's just because uh, the 24 quart is more horsepower or draws more current, um, it doesn't seem like the 350 actually generates any heat uh, in any. Uh, well, it's quantity. the machine itself isn't going to get hot. It's going to expel hot air. But you're right. The CB350 is not generating a lot of heat. Okay. I wouldn't even give it a second thought. That's why okay. we only. That's why it's only in air only in air cooled. Gotcha. Um, okay. It's the bigger machines. Okay. The, the more you go up in horsepower, okay. and we're talking big horsepower, okay. your home air conditioner is, is probably not even a quarter horsepower. Two horsepower on the CB350. Okay. Oh boy, thank you. Everybody, if you haven't met her, that's my wife Paula. Hi Paula. <laughs> Paula is doing the shipping, and so if you ask that you want it uh, you know, brought in by five strong men, and uh, you know, and uncrated and hooked up and show you how to run it, she's gonna say, forget about it. Yeah. You know, it ain't happening. She basically deliver every machine in my own truck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, that was my next question. She just came back from Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you. It's a little cold up there. <laughs> yes. Who? Who, Who else? said yes? Oh, I got a question. Mm -hmm. 
This is the time. Roger that. Hey, uh, we're going to be mobile. We've got three mobile units, and uh, we want to have our, our Caribbean ice uh, in a freezer inside here. We're going to use those wall, those Walmart freezers to. Uh, we're we're going to use those Walmart freezers to to uh, store it on the vehicles, and then uh, and so I'm calling about uh, asking about temporary. Uh, we're going to store it in some husband freezers in our shop. And then transfer it to that inside of the truck. What, what's our our transfer time and, and temporary time? Only you'll be able to answer that after a few days. After a few days. But basically, you're going to take. We're using these as freezer freezers, freezer, freezer. and we've got them set full cold, ten below. Uh, for the ices in your husband at home, ten below. They'll keep it for a month or more, if need be. Um, but when you transfer it over, you again look at the weather tomorrow and just say, oh, it's going to be a beautiful day. It's going to be in the 80s. It's Texas. going to be a gorgeous weekend, Texas. Texas. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. So we're going to set the freezers that are in the truck up to tempering temperature. Uh, about about uh, 9 degrees, 10 degrees. About 10 degrees. 10 degrees. 10 degrees, 10 degrees, 10 degrees yeah, okay. it'll still be a little too firm to scoop, but it's not losing any flavor. It's not bleeding down. So uh, 0 to 10 below in your home. Uh, 10 degrees in your truck and then your serving cabinet uh, at 16. Well, the, those are going to be our serving cabinets. Okay, you're going to have trouble getting those up to 16 degrees. Uh, they're not designed to go that high. Okay. Um, I mean, with all that door flipping open, scooping. You can try. We can try. You can so try. But you, you could always get a refrigeration man to put a different thermostat in to warm it up. Yeah, okay. I see. I mean, it might be about $400, but. It's cheaper than two thousand for a, a Italian ice dipping cabinet. More like twenty five hundred. Mm -hmm. So. Put a, put a heater. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So that, that's a trial by error. Yes, right. 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 Try by error with easy parameters already known. And you can call me. Okay. You guys in the back, no questions. Uh, I'm gonna push car. I'm sorry. Yes. I bought a push car last year. Great. Insulated right in front of my building. Mm -hmm. In a couple of hours. Just to get up to 16. Right? Yeah. So, but the problem I was having was it was too cold. It was too frozen. Yeah. It was an ice cream push car, and I was using it for water ice. What do I do? What temperature should I have? What's the source of cold for it? Do you plug it in? I plug it in overnight. Mm -hmm. It gets cold. Then I take the product, put it in, and I was working in front of my pizza shop. Mm -hmm. But it, it stayed, it was either really frozen, or then it went to really mush, really quick. Mm -hmm. Only because I was selling it quick, I was able to get rid of it. So what temperature should I have had it set to? Is this push cart just in front of your pizza parlor as an add-on? Yes, I had to use it as an add-on. The city wouldn't let me move around with it. They said only within a certain amount of feet of an existing business. Uh, quite frankly, I would switch from the push cart, which I'll tell you how to get rid of real quick, uh, over to a bona fide Italian ice dipping cabinet, um, where you can roll it out in the morning and have it out there and the temperature's going to be even all day. You've got to sell a consistent product, right. and that's going to be the way to do it. But here's the interesting thing, if, uh, and how to get rid of that push cart real fast. Now, if you told me you were taking it out on weekends uh, to a park and, and selling ice, I can guarantee you that people are coming up to you and they're buying a lemon ice and they're, and they're looking at you with this longing look in their eye, not for you, but for what you're doing. They're saying, boy, I wish I could do that. And your first answer is going to be, well, you can't. These formulas came from my great, great grandfather from Genoa, Italy, the whole works. Second answer, no, you can't do it. You have to buy $1,000 worth of ice from Little Jimmy's, one of my customers. Right. Or via Veneto or Rosati, and uh, you have to have a place to store it, so you can't do that. The third answer is the right one, and you'll have 20 push carts, 20 people buying from you wholesale. You'll be a mini wholesaler because what you say to them is, uh, You like my ice? I'll tell you what, I've got this push cart for sale. You can have it for $1,500, and I'm going to sell you my ice. $40 a tub. Uh, and uh, at uh, three dollars a scoop or two fifty dollars a scoop, you're going to make over two hundred dollars per tub in profit. And you call me on Monday. You tell me how many tubs of mango, cherry, 
uh, chocolate chip cookie you want, and then you come pick them up on Friday at my place of business. We'll have them frozen down to 10 below. Real rock solid. Bring a, a, one of those big igloo coolers like you could put a Marlin in. Mm-hmm. Put it in the back seat of your car. We're going to load your ices into that. You're going to take it home to your Sears chest freezer, and you're going to go out this weekend and sell your ices and, and make hundreds of dollars for your family. You'll have 10 or 20 people doing that from you right out of the pizza parlor. You already have everything there. Yes. And the little bit of bending the law, um, so you can think about it, is if, if Jeff walks up to you and buys a lemon ice, that's a retail sale. You just sold him a lemon ice, retail. Right. Paula walks up to you and buys 10 tubs of lemon ice, puts them in her car, drives them back to her pizza parlor and sells it. Four ounces, retail sale, 10 tubs, she picked it up. That's still a retail sale. Absolutely. And so you don't need a wholesale license. Whatever you do, don't deliver it. Just yep. don't deliver it. Don't deliver it. The ISIS King of Corona was famous throughout uh, Queens, New York, uh, for being in some of the finest restaurants in New York with his Italian ice, and he made them all pick it up because he didn't want to be wholesale. Uh, yeah, real smart. So if you want to expand the business, you can put 10 other families in the business by just selling them your ice and you get rid of your cart and wherever you bought the cart, when they, the first time you see them, if you want to find out if they're legit, you hand them the literature on your, what your cart was and you say, you know what, this thing cost me 1600 bucks. If you want to buy one, you go do it. I'm not involved, but I'll sell you my ice. And now you're really getting big. Though Jeff will tell you, and he's right, there's a heck of a lot more money in selling it by the scoop than there is by the tub. Forty dollars sounds great, but he's making three hundred. He's making three hundred uh, by the scoop. So he's right. But this is another alternative. Yes, I had a question as far as like in Tony's situation, he has uh, these these mobile units or these uh, trailers or if they're trailers, if he has like several different locations uh, that he could actually keep his trailers at, what would be the best way to transport uh, product from, like, say, where you're making it to these trailers from trailer to trailer or from uh, location to location? A lot of people will buy an old used uh, Toyota pickup truck, uh, put a box in the back or have a friend build it. Uh, There's a product you can get at Home Depot that's uh, three-inch thick pink uh, styrofoam. It comes in sheets about the size of the table here. And it's called Formula with an R after it. So it's Formula R. And it's got the insulation of about six feet of concrete. It's, it's great stuff. So you could have someone build you a box in the back of a truck, line it, put a little refrigeration unit on it, because all it has to do, it's already frozen solid in your place. All it has to do is maintain it for a few hours. And that's how you deliver it around. But you're getting into the DOT and driving a truck and... Everything else, I can't help you there. No, he's saying taking it to uh, where he makes it from to the location where he's setting his business up. Yeah, if it's his own business, then that's fine. Yeah. It's, it's no problem. He's just transporting inventory. Right, it would all be his you know, it could be It could be no. hamburger rolls for all over right. here. Yeah, okay. yeah that's going to be the best way, depending yeah, on how many locations. Or, or do what I do, get an escort radar and drive fast. <laughs> <laughs> I just got a new one. It's got a range so far, the cops, before they even turn on their unit, the, I'm already picking them up. <laughs> we'll see tomorrow. Yeah. Jeff, you had some coffee. You had a lot of coffee this morning, didn't you? Yeah, we got <laughs> That's what I've been doing for the past year. I wish Jeff. you would have told me. I could have napped here for that's a why, That's why sales are up so much. <laughs> right. You had some questions. I did? You were had a list the other oh, day. Oh, sure. Do uh, you have any other questions here? Larry? I got a question so far. Um, I think you're, you're used up. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't use up on me, though. What is it, you're, Tony? You're good. <laughs> what is it? Hey, uh, when, when you talked about you might be going into business Correct. in a different market. Right. Are you going to do anything different? Because nope. I kind of Why would I do anything different? And, and I made a million dollars in four years. Gotcha, Kevin. Why would I make anything different? I, I mean, but you know, there, there's growth always, so would you do anything? Now, the people who bought my store... Uh-huh. Uh, went from five dollars to three different prices they have five eight and twelve uh-huh. yeah. uh, and i won't do that, that. No. Okay. One, just just the lessons that you kind of learned over time you know if you do something and it works don't stick with it yeah, yeah. 
And I've got this guy right here who's new in business. He, this is his first big business venture, and he's putting everything he's got into it with his wife. And I don't want to let them down. I would do something different that he won't accept in his store. I'll take credit cards because uh, if you're under 40, nobody's carrying cash. Boy, you can't even get, I can't even get people under 40 to send in a check. It's the same. I mean, a check? The, what's, what's a check? I, I'd have to go out and get it's checks It's the same made. learning curve. They come in once, no credit cards. I'll give them the ice cream. I'll give it to them. Pay me next time. Or don't pay me at all. Whatever. After, after two weeks, they'll know. You go to Mystic Ice Cream or you go to whatever our, our name is going to be. Bring cash. Okay, the difference is you're getting the same repeat crowd from the retirement community all the time. They're going to be getting uh, transients. They're going to be getting uh, vacation people. Nobody cares. There's an cash. ATM in uh, next door in. Nobody's Dixie. going to go get the ATM just so they can buy your ice cream. They'll move yeah. on. Well, we, let we them take, move on. We take shoes. We take you know, <laughs> whatever. Oh, oh, that earring looks nice. We take that. But, but we'll definitely take credit cards. We'll take Apple Pay. We'll take all those things because it's convenient for our customers. And they've gotten so easy. Yeah. You don't need a big terminal. You just slide it through your phone yeah. if you want. They, they can't even count. Well, you, got, you got now, you can just pitch your phone there. Yeah. Right. And listen, I was so resistant about taking credit cards because uh, it, it just didn't seem worth it for a $5 sale. Uh, but those $5, $6 sales add up so much, and the accounting is so easy. Boom, the money's in your bank. It's all, you can see where it all was. You can see trends. Uh, I... I would. I like Square. I mean, I'm sure there's other things out there, but the Square is basically you can buy a little terminal from them, but otherwise you just slide it through your phone. Well, if what, uh, Larry has the right idea, and I would go that route where they just do that and it's done, right? Yeah, yeah. that's the new, those are the new terminals. Yeah. Not, yeah, not so new it. anymore. Yeah, you don't have to slide it enough and now yeah. right. you put your phone in. Yes. Right, you use your phone, right? Yep. Bingo, done. Yeah. That's what I wanted to say, that if you have the store mm -hmm. like you uh, had before uh, Apple in the, in Apple the village uh, and there are people who know each other, so it's good because uh, they're the same people every day and they are coming back, so they yeah. know they have to bring cash. Right. But if you, if you are a store uh, okay, on the, I, on the I picture, for example, okay. and they're tourists, so uh, they don't collect money with them. It's, uh, it's certainly an area that I have to grow yes, up, yes. you know, <laughs> I, I have to... I have to grow out of my being a dinosaur. Mike, uh, Mike, no, flag the tape. <laughs> flag the tape. No, We're going to put it on a loop. I think, I think it just depends on the, on the place where you are. And it's like, well, yes and no. I can still do it anywhere without yeah, course, credit card. But you can educate people when they are coming back. Uh, I, I understand. And when, you, when they are tourists and they are coming back home, Okay, you don't sell us uh, ice cream with a cart. We will go somewhere else. You know, Camille, it's it's unfortunate, but uh, let me look around here. No, he's a cash guy. But you you <laughs> normally uh, you you ask a millennial uh, or an eighteen year old how much money you got in your pocket? Zero. Zero. Yeah. Zero. They don't have any. You know, I'm even such an old guy. That in the back of my phone case, I, I have a twenty dollar bill, just just, just in case you need it. Mm -hmm. But they don't think that way. They all they think is a credit card. I am so proud of my children. My older son, I've been told this story, said to the younger son, "Real men carry cash," That's right. because he didn't even have buy, uh, tip money uh, for the dinner. One son takes the other out to dinner and says, "You get the tip." Well, he didn't have any tip money. And he turns to me and says, real money carry, real men carry cash. And I thought, you're darn right they do. Because when the, those computers go down, you know, cash will always get you somewhere. Uh, um, are they going to sell pints in the store to take out? We, we haven't made those decisions yet. Okay. Can I talk about pints? Yeah, talk about I'd rather pints. talk about lunch. No, talk about pints real quick. All right. I mean, whatever you say, sir. I'm not so saying I'm ice. not saying that I single-handedly saved the ice cream business this year, but I did sell out. You can't buy a chest freezer anywhere in the country right now because of me, because I started writing articles back in March when this started, and then uh, you can see them at my website or I'll send them to you. Um, I said you've got to get into pint sales real quick because. Uh, I was watching an ad one night for Domino's Pizza, 
not a great pizza in my mind. Um, and the, the whole ad, uh, a voiceover is the guy who does the deep voice who's talking as you're, and you're telling you what you're seeing. What you're seeing is the pizza door opens up and the big paddle goes in and the voiceover is saying, your pizza from the time it's made, and then you see it drop into a box, the box magically closes, and the next thing you knew, mom and dad and two children are out on the front lawn, and you see the box, no hands, being handed to them their pizza. From the time your pizza's made, no hands have touched your food. And I looked at that and I go, holy cow, that's how we're gonna save ourselves, is we've gotta, we can't scoop ice cream right now with the COVID uh, in 99% of the places. Uh, we've gotta do um, pints, and uh, take out cups. Quickly, the cups, I have some nice cups over there I can show you. Five ounce uh, orange plastic, biodegradable. You put a scoop in, it's got a domed lid. You put four of them into a bag, throw in some sprinkles, a little packet of sprinkles or some M&Ms or whatever you want and sell it for $25 as a party pack. And you just hand them the party pack. Uh, the pints was based on Sammy um, before COVID. Um, it's Friday afternoon. Paula says, uh, we have uh, the Joneses coming over. Would you please pick up some dessert? I got to go to Publix. I got to go to the supermarket. I got to stand behind the lady who's got the little change purse and she's counting out 98 cents. Those are the ones I say, here, lady, here's a buck. Just go. Um, I don't want that. So um, I set up ice cream parlors where they have like a true vertical freezer. There's other brands, glass doors, uh, zero, ten below and it's filled with pints that I filled either at the machine or by hand, they're all ready to go, and they're in there. I walk in, I'm a millennial, I want quality, I know your quality is, is fantastic, and I don't care about price. I just, my job, men wanna make things easy on themselves. My job is to bring home dessert tonight. So I pull in with my, I was gonna say, my big uh, <laughs> SUV, Sammy's in the back, doors are locked, air conditioning's on because I know I can run in, here's a line of people, and I go over here where it says take out pints. I grab a mint chip for me, I grab a coconut for Paula. If I don't bring Paula one, I'm sleeping in the garage tonight. <laughs> so I put out two, they're $8 each. I don't care about the price, my job is to get the ice cream tonight and know the quality's great. The server over here, who's got a line of uh, doing uh, ice cream cones, turns to the crowd and says, excuse me one second, runs over to me. Uh, you want a bag? No. You want a receipt? No. Slide your card. Boom, boom, or tap. And I grab my pints and I'm out. 40 seconds. Sammy was safe in the car, the air conditioning was on, and I'm on my way home, a 40 second stop. 10 years ago, two years ago, if I had done that, um, the, uh, the people in this line would have said, did you see that guy? He interrupted my sale. Now they look and they say, did you see that guy who came in here? He just bought two pints of ice cream, four pints of ice cream. He was out the door in 30 seconds. I could do that next Tuesday <clears throat> when my friends are coming over to play bridge. Or I got the guys coming for poker uh, on, on Thursday night. I could just grab some and go. I didn't have to go through the supermarket. Pint sales are through the roof. My customers are up 30, 40, 50, sometimes 60% this year. Okay because of the pint sales. It's incredible. And it's become, it's gonna become, a, it is a standard now, and it's a great way to add income. Uh, tremendous income, just grab and go. And the fact that the line didn't get upset uh, because they said, thought to themselves, you see that guy, I could do that. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just changed everything. Uh, the, the, it changed the whole business. 10% of my customers are failing. The other 90% are doing better same store sales than last year. Why are the 10% failing? Because they tell me, this will kill you, because you're all entrepreneurs. Uh, we're waiting for the governor to tell us that we can open up. I go, well, you're, you're never going to get that. Just get open and pay the fines later. Yeah. Italian ice, is that something you can sell in pints or not necessarily Ab because of the temperature? Absolutely, okay. yes. And why doesn't haagen and Ben & Jerry sell in quarts or half gallons or... Uh, at all, only they pints. They don't have to. They don't have to, but also, according to, I teach at Penn State once a year, and according to the professor, head of the Penn State Dairy School, he said, "All right, eight dollar pint. You'll spend sixteen dollars on on two pints of ice cream. You got to buy two. Can't buy one. You'll be in the garage. Uh, you'll spend sixteen dollars on two pints, 
but you won't spend $32 on a half gallon because that's insane. I don't care if you're Bill Gates. If I hand you a 24 karat gold case for your iPhone and you're the richest man on earth, you're gonna say, not me, that's, that's wasteful, that's crazy. So nothing higher than a pint. Don't listen to anybody else, only sell pints. They'll just go throughout the store like crazy and charge what you want. Some places are getting $10 a pint, no problem. And don't lower the price because it's ices. It's still dessert, everything else still applies. And I think Jeff's hungry. Hello, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> you ready to eat? I'm ready for everybody to have lunch. All right, there you go. We'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> in about two hours. <laughs> <laughs>